not sure if I missed this, but have you ever picked up a supermodel? Um, not like super supermodel. I mean, <laughs> I mean like a pinup model is models, Playboy, cyber model. So, what um, what do you usually do? <laughs> <laughs> Um, obviously it, it sort of depends. Um, I generally encourage all my students to practice what I call a more direct type game, uh, which is about having the kind of physical confidence and the, the mental fortitude to go up to a girl and basically tell her she's beautiful without trying to protect her ego. Um, I think very few girls, very few attractive girls <coughs> are rarely told that they're actually beautiful. Uh, and what I mean by that is, yes, girls, they'll be hollered by guys. Like, there's like this stereotype of construction workers going like, oh, damn, girl, look at your madonka dog, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not really indirect. On a certain level, he understands that's not going to work. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> but what he can do is he can brag to his friends, like, yeah, you know, well, I was a hollering at this girl, but she was like a lesbian, you know? <laughs> um, and... When, you, when you're truly going up to a girl in a dress style, you are not trying to protect your ego. You're, just, you're going up and you're telling her you think she's beautiful. You like to get to know her. You tell her you think she's, you know, has incredible energy. Um, th again, there are advantages and disadvantages to the different styles of approaching girls. Uh, when it comes, the general rule of thumb is when it comes to girls who make their living off of their appearance, um, like strippers, um, <laughs> I'm saying like cocktail waitresses, women, who, who in their entire life is based around the physical appearance. The classic indirect kind of uh, group group method does work on them. And the, uh, because these women, you know, their livelihood is based off of the way they look. So they are getting that kind of uh, material all the time. But any, uh, I would say, emotionally healthy, beautiful girl, it's fine, you know, going direct on a girl. She's like, you know, model looking, and she's like a doctor, a lawyer, um, you know, has, you know, it is normal. Uh, being genuine, honest, and authentic, and direct will work on her. So. Um, so it seems like putting guys through a boot camp where they um, like to see women as a goal seems like it'd be easy for them to start objectifying women or thinking of women as just like, okay, well, yes, because like it makes sense that like it's easier to be confident pursuing like a girl, thinking as a girl and not as like an actual person. Um, so what exactly is like, like, do you, is there, like, what do you think about that? Do you think that it leads to objectification of women? Um, um, calling, like, just calling it the game, or like, yeah. can you uh, do you guys, like, or do you pick up artists that keep score, like, what is the... <laughs> I mean, you're, you're um, correct. Pick up artists keep score, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's an interesting you know factor for you. Uh, one out of three women keep score too. They keep sex logs. So again, look around. Someone's keeping a sex log. It was like that that Duke um, who yeah. traded all the men, right? Got score. So the idea is we're not the only ones doing it. Right? Uh, like, but you are completely correct that this does on a certain level objectify women, and there is a completely dark side to this. Now, some guys get so good, I mean, it just becomes like, you know, the, the turntable. Um, I will say, however, we don't really have actually a lot of players or player potential that come to my boot camp. Uh, obviously, there are exceptions, but a lot of my students come into this because they've only had maybe one or two girlfriends, and it's always been girls that have picked them up, all right? It was never their choice. So, for them, there is a lot of, it's very intimidating. And so the use of the language allows them to distance themselves from the inevitable embarrassment. Because again, trust me, you girls don't understand how completely horrifying it is and how scary it is to approach a girl and then to be rejected, you know, or to have a girl tell you like, you know, I don't like Asians, you know, whether she's white or whatever. I've, I've had that from white girls and Asian girls. And I've had racist comments, and that allows us, on a certain level, to emotionally distance ourselves from the inevitable hurt, because you will get rejected. There is no such thing as a 100% effective approach, you know, line, you know, icebreaker. You will face inevitable rejection, 
And this allows us, allows the student to be like, okay, that was, you know, that was a two set, you know, she's a bit cold, but that's fine, I'm gonna go to the next two set. Mm -hmm. oh, so also like, one more time, question. When girls ask you what you do, like, what do you do? <laughs> I do tell them. Yeah. At this point, uh, part of it is I am simply too much of a public figure woman. You can look me up. I mean, I'm on I'm on Wikipedia. I mean, <laughs> um, I don't I don't straight out say I'm like a pickup artist. I do simply say like dating coach, motivational speaker. Uh, <laughs> Isn't everybody motivated now? <laughs> um, but no, I am honest because you know women. It is the age of Google. I think everyone made that like oh you know Google them so. So what advice do you have for college students? Ah, college. Oh. Uh, <laughs> let's see. In college, this is for you guys. This will be the easiest time ever in your entire life if you will get a girlfriend. I, it is. It's just downhill from here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, it literally is. Like every student I've ever taught has basically said, if only I knew this when I was younger. Because if you can't be, if you can't get a girlfriend now, it's just going to be incredibly tough once you get out of the workforce. So uh, part of it is, if you're learning pickup, and I know some guys are here are learning pickup, even though you're not gonna say you are. Um, don't try like the hardcore cold approaching or canned material, because you are in a social circle setting, and it is during the daytime. So you have a more at risk when it comes to, I guess, social status and social capital. Um, if you try to hit on like, uh, the girl that's in your social circle or in your math class, <laughs> right? Um, and that you know, if you try if you try to like cold approach her um, in a very hardcore manner, and she rejects you, she's in your math class for the entire semester. <laughs> <laughs> so a social circle game is a lot more slow burning. Um, you do, however, have a lot of potential for social proof. Uh, a lot of kind of game that was run in college is, you know, frat boy game. What do frat boys do? You throw parties, get drunk, and have a lot of fun. <laughs> that's, that's basically it, and it works. Um, I would say for a lot of college students, simply open up a lot of social circles. Don't simply stick to one group or social circle. Have a lot of activities going on. Throw parties, you know, throw, throw <coughs> parties at your house or whatever and be someone that people want to invite out. Be that person that people enjoy to be around. And then from there, it's the idea of just cultivating social circles. Because, uh, you know, pickup is, is like hunting. You know, when you're hungry, you go out, you, you hunt. You know, you get, you know. <laughs> and you're fed for a week, whatever. <laughs> Um, well what happens when you run out and you're starving? It's like that feast or fan, right? Now you, you know, you have to go out again. When you have a social circle and you have friends in your social circle, um, it's again, it's like basically cultivation, it's farming. So, <laughs> uh, um, and the thing is, here's, here's an interesting concept of what we call social proof. Again, psychologists have shown this. Um, I'll start with the men. Here's there's something interesting about when it comes to women surrounding themselves with a lot of guys. I think every girl has like that boy crazy guy um, that's just friends with a bunch of like guys. Men find that intimidating. Men are likely to less approach you if you surround yourself by men. So that's a girl game tip. However, the reverse is true when it comes to women. All right, if a guy is surrounded by a lot of women, women find him more attractive. All right, so. You know, again, if you're if you have social circles, if you have um, throwing parties and women see that other women are attracted to you, then they're more likely to find you. You know, more likely to approach you, more likely to try to instigate any kind of romantic relationship with you. Again, it's kind of you know what comes first, the chicken or the egg. You know, in order to get girls, you have to have girls. So. <laughs> <laughs>